guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, a few things before I begin. Um, as you can see from the title above, this is going to be another reading vlog. Yes, I am finally diving into A Royal Family by Linda Ferguson. This is the second book in the Lion and the Butterfly trilogy. The first book was A Royal Dance. If you haven't seen my reading vlog, just click the eye on the screen to go check out that video. But me and my sis, Steph, you can click the eye to go to her channel as well, are finally diving into the sequel. Oh, I'm just ready, ready for it. So the goal is to do 75 to 100 pages a day um i'm going to try to tackle the first 100 pages which is literally like this portion here um so that's basically chapters 1 through 15 i'm gonna try to tackle that today um i have a lot a lot of reading to a, a lot of reading to get done um i actually just finished reading ahead in um redeeming love by francine rivers this is the book club pick for daughter up increase on facebook so um yes i am reading about six chapters at a time that way i can have the discussion questions prepared so we have that then i also need to read this book here which is sojourner by john Lynn boygett it's the third book in the tales of fey raven oh, i love the series i am rereading the sequel because i finally got a copy of the ebook to read that properly so i'm rereading the sequel today but i need to read that book as well the sequel is called wayfarer so we had a lot of reading to get done, but um, today we're going to get into this. So like I said, my sister and I are going to be doing 75 to 100 pages a day. I'm probably just going to stick to 100 pages a day. So today is Friday. I should be done with this by Sunday. Probably not Sunday, most likely Monday, because Sundays is church days. Um, So that's what's going on. So if you guys don't know what the story is, I'm not going to read the synopsis of this because this is a sequel, but it does follow a young girl named Jerusha, and it just is her coming to the understanding of who Yeshua is and becoming a believer and a follower of Christ and um, just growing in her faith pretty much. There is a lot of talk of sexual abuse, rape in the book. Um, adultery takes place in the book. It does talk about other things. Um, I'm pretty sure this second book talks about um, her being barren. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not 100% sure, but huh, I'm ready to dive back into this world because I am so sure. I know that Caiaphas um, makes a reappearance and I'm like, I'm over Caiaphas and his son. Ugh, I'm over it. But yes, the second, the first book ended off on a cliffhanger. Just, just wow. Um, yeah, it ended off with a whammy, so I'm excited to dive in and see if we get Jacob returning back because I miss Jacob. Jacob is Jerusha's father. There was some stuff that took place. Again, just watch my reading vlogs and know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I'm going to dive into the first 100 pages. I'm probably going to read um, maybe chapters 1 through 5 and then come back to you guys and let you guys know my thoughts because I only have a few minutes before my son's father's father's my son's father gets here and when he gets here we're gonna be watching supernatural and um seven deadly sins you know i can't read I've, I've just learned that i can't make videos or read when he's here because yeah so we're gonna try to read the first five chapters come back talk to you guys and then i'll finish up later so i'll see you guys in a few minutes yep okay guys so right now it's 4 17 on the last time i spoke to you guys i think it was like 11 something or something like that but um I had only gotten two <laughs> pages in before my son's father got here, and then I watched Supernatural Season 15, Episode 1, gutted me. Then we watched our um, anime, which was okay. Um, and then, I don't know why, but I've just decided to start getting into John Wick, since the fourth movie is coming out in 2021. So, I am five minutes away from finishing the movie. I just paused it, though. Um, really good. Really good. But I have gotten through chapter one of this book, and oh my gosh, my heart is just like, it's, 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 it's happy. But, um, I wanted to quickly come on and talk to you guys about how I annotate, because I know a lot of people have asked me about annotating and things like that, and I, I do have three different ways that I annotate outside of my Bible annotating. So I do annotate my Bible, and, um, I will talk about that in a separate video, because I do different annotations for different Bibles. So I'm going to start a series on how I annotate, basically, for different things. So I did one before um, when I think I was reading either Shelter of the Most High. No, was it Harvest of Rubies? 
I think it was a Connie Lynn cassette book that I was reading. You can click the eye on the screen to watch that video where I just went through how I annotate. But um, I'm going to do it again. So if you guys don't remember, you know, A Royal Family, book two, The Lion and the Butterfly by Linda Ferguson. It's so good. And um, here is what my annotating key looks like. So I have this side that says Biblical Fiction. And then this side that just says Reading annotating so i do annotate my biblical fiction novels and my christian fiction novels very different from me annotating my regular novels just because i feel like there are there's much more that i want to pull out as far as scriptures and prayers so um the pens that i use are the sharpie art pens they're different from the regular sharpie pen markers these are specifically the art pens um the art pens have like this black body with the color around the bottom I use these. These are 0.7, I believe. I think these are 0.7. I can't really remember. I'll leave a link down below so you can get the 10 pack. I think it's an 8 pack and a 10 pack available. I got mine off of Amazon, right? Did I get them off of Amazon? I, I'm pretty sure I did get them from Amazon. But um, these are the colors that I use. I use all of these. I have nine colors, I think. So the red color that I use is going to be for anything relating to characters, their names, their traits. Um, I do this only for, like, important characters. Um, so primary characters, secondary characters, maybe tertiary characters if they're important to the story. But any important character in their character traits as far as, like, their height, their age, um, what they do, things like that, I mark with red. Then for orange i use this for plot points so anything that's essential to the storyline me following the storyline um plot twists or anything like that is orange purple has to do with the bible any scriptures um references and things like that so if i read a quote and that quote is something specifically that i know from a scripture i will underline it in purple and um then go back and write the actual scripture reference brown is for anything that's personal or any questions that i might have or any questions that are in the book that i think are um essential to myself so just personal things i'm marking brown yellow is for funny moments happy moments anything that just makes me giddy when i'm reading it um a lot of the times it's basically going to be parts that make me crack up when people like in the novels make me laugh so that's what i do with yellow blue would be the opposite is anything that makes me sad or angry i mark it in blue pink used to just deal with romance but now i make pink anything that i love any type of relational type of relationships um whether it be romantic family wise anything that i'm, I'm loving that's taking place in the book it's marked in pink green is for memorable quotes so anything that i want to remember anything that i want to include if i'm doing like my favorite quotes from the novel this is what i'm marking green coral is for anything that has to do with prayer so if there are prayers within the stories that i really enjoy and want to be able to implement into myself i mark with the coral so again these are the sharpie art pens they're so good so great um and that is that and then i use tabs so i'm going to show you guys these tabs right now i use the post-it brand tabs um they're pretty much running low but i use the ones with the pink purple blue and the orange i use those and the green um and then i use dollar tree tabs i love 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 dollar tree sticky tabs oh these are amazing this one is almost gone this one is almost done but um here's a brand new one that i just opened to use the orange tabs but i use these and then i got a bunch off of amazon um i have a bunch in my stash right now that i need to actually purchase if i could find the ones that i got from amazon i'll leave it linked down below because it was like a really big one and it came with these um it came with the arrow ones then it came with some skinny ones and some patterned ones i really really enjoy those um i need to actually do another order for those but um yeah so i'm gonna be diving into chapter two but um just linda i love her writing like i said i told you before linda reminds me did i say this before i think it was either her and i think it was her or melissa and her but either way um the way that she writes really kind of meshes up with my love of how tessa writes and how connie writes and i just love it um the prologue was just as interesting as the prologue from the first book i do prefer the prologue from the first book though but um i did find something important from the prologue in this one and um chapter one is basically somewhat recapping what happened in the last book um basically we have jerusha and um she now runs this kind of like safe haven for a lot of the widows and the orphans because we know that the the, the romans and the um high priest are basically killing off yeshua followers um it's been three years since saul entered the picture so this is three years after apparently um, with Saul persecuting everyone 
you know, they take in orphans at her house, and then Simone, who is her lovely husband in Yogli, which you have to read the first book for me to tell you who Yogli is, just know Yogli is, he's amazing, and, um, Timon and Yogli basically then help those women and orphans escape somewhere else, I'm not sure where, but, um, yeah, and, you know, we get to see Jerusha and her sassiness, I love me some Jerusha, um, she's very sassy, she has definitely come a long way from the first book, which I love the growth from her character, um, Timon is still the handsome man that he is, Yogli is hilarious, definitely reminds me of Jacob so much, and, um, yeah, she is pregnant, but apparently there was some issues where she lost five, she had five miscarriages in the past three years, so, um, she's not pregnant again, she's eight weeks along, and she's a little afraid to tell her husband, because one, she might lose a baby, and two, she is also afraid because her husband is now doing dangerous work of, you know, getting the orphans and the widows escaped to escape out of Jerusalem. So it's a lot going on. Um, there so far have been two scripture references, which I actually need to like take my time to. There's actually been three scripture references, right? Yeah, the first one was and at the beginning of the book, but um, the other two I didn't get a chance to fully write down yet, but um. Yeah, so far it's interesting. I'm just waiting for the sassiness. I love Jerusha and how sassy she is. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to get back into reading. I'm going to watch the last five minutes of John Wick, dive back into reading up until chapter 10, and then come back to you guys. Or I might just read all the way through to chapter 15 and then bring you guys my thoughts. But, yep, getting back into this book now. So, it's, um, 8.44. I just got back in the house. I left my house at, like, 5.30 to go to... Um, take my brother to rehearsal with my mom and my sis and while I was in the car I read all 100 pages and yeah I thought book one was a whammy and a doozy um, book two is uh, <sighs> Jerusha just cannot get a win right now she is going through so much and it's like it's crazy because in this book you really see her struggling to surrender everything to god and she's in one of those situations in which um so much is happening back to back to back and it's like when she surrenders one thing you know like when you give up one thing and god is like well do you really trust me and he takes something else from you and you struggle with that but then give it up to him and he's like are you serious and he'll take something else she's just getting smacked in the face back to back by god god is just like let me test your buttons let me see how much you love me let me see how much you truly you know will surrender to me and it's just like oh i feel so bad for her because she's going through so so much um and there was a scene where she got first of all these roman soldiers disgusted spit in her face took the decree off her door they're looking for the person who gave her the decree and i can't really tell you guys who gave the decree to her because then that will spoil it for you guys so yeah um i know these are like spoiler based videos but i try not to give you too much info but it's it's going it's it's going down <sighs> been texting my my sister Steph because she's reading it and she's like uh it's it's been it's been crazy um i am loving it five star or oh, only one third of the way through five star so um yeah it's just uh. i will say timon is such like he's such an amazing husband like his love for her and how much he loves her is amazing there is a new character named deborah i think that's how you say her name i don't like her she a little mm. she basically is supposed to be like a widow with two two sons I don't really know how much that is true because there are some things coming to light about her. Jacob, however, did come back and I'm so excited, but there are some things that Jacob is struggling with right now. So it's just like everybody's getting hit with stuff back to back and um, it's just oh, so sad. And the baby girl, Sarah, the one I talked about in the last book. All right, if you saw my last reading vlog when I talked about this uh, a royal dance, I talked about Sarah, the little girl, and how she wanted to call um, Timon and... Jerusha, Ima, and Abba. There was a scene with her that like made me made me want to cry. And then there's little. Then you have these little orphan kids like Hosea and Joseph and Moses. And I'm just like, oh my God, their names, their names, just like. Ugh. And Moses is a little boy, but he acts just like the Moses we know that saved the Egypt, like saved the Hebrews from Egypt, led them out of Egypt. Excuse me, um, that one. So he reminds me so much of him. 
Uh, this book is just it's gutting me to the core i'm loving it um this might not be a really long vlog because i'm not gonna it's just it's so good it's so good linda has such a way with her writing um that it just pulls you in and it, it, it's like one of those books that you can literally sit down and read and not really pay attention to the time and you can fly through it i'm trying not to fly through it because this is going to be a three-day vlog but um oh, so I don't even know. Like, I'm curious as to what's going to happen in the in the next third of the book because so much has already happened. And I'm just like, Jerusha is like, no wins. No wins. Like, you guys see the blue and the pink tabs, right? Blue and pink tabs. <sighs> so sad. But I read that. And then while I was in the car, I'm finishing up Wayfarer, which I'll put the cover of the picture, the cover of the book here because I don't own a physical copy of it. I just went and got the ebook of it and I'm reading it on my phone. And that is guiding me to the core. I talked about the first book. Oh my god, I don't have the first book on me, do I? I'm trying to see if I have it. Yes, I do. Let me grab it without dropping one of my mugs. We have no space for anything. Let me just grab this book. So, I talked about this book, which is Dawn Singer by Jonathan Voigt. Oh, so, so good. It's a Christian fantasy. Really, really interesting. It's about fairies, or I don't know if they're fairies. I'm... Even into book two, I'm still confused on whether they're humans or fairies or both. They call them elders and kindred. That's all that I know. So I'm, I'm just going to give up and just say fairies in my mind. But it's really, really good. Um, and I'm enjoying it. So I'm reading the sequel. Finally, like fully reading the sequel. Because I only got to 50% of the sequel before. Um, and then had to stop because I didn't like the arc that they sent me. But um, oh, so good. I am 78% through. But I really just have four chapters left. I'm on chapter 21. There are 25 chapters. And then I can dive into... <gasps> the sojourner which is book three and um i'm excited to see what happens in this so far oh, i'm loving this series it's really good not my top christian fantasy but definitely up there with my christian fantasies but um yes so today's vlog for a royal family is done um not much footage because like i said i was in the car and i was trying to read so i'm going to try to figure out what's going on with my computer because my computer's bugging out right now eating my son's grapes he didn't eat his grapes for snack and tool so i'm eating them i'm about to have me some baked alfredo chicken pasta that i made last night with some spanish food i'm gonna have me my ice cream and um binge read the rest of this tonight how to finish this tonight um i'm debating on doing a video or two tonight we'll see um, luckily, my brother is on tour for the next three weeks, so I have enough time to make a bunch of videos. I'm going to try to get ahead on my video making. I'm supposed to be going out tomorrow, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen, which is a little bit disappointing for many reasons, but um, we're just going to leave it at that. But um, yeah, that's it for this video, so I'll see you in the next day. Hey guys, so it is the 12th. It's Saturday, October 12th, 1.47 right now. Um... I was supposed to get up earlier this morning and read and then go out, but things didn't pan out the way I wanted them to, so I'm pretty much sitting in the house, and I've just been in my feelings <laughs> as of yesterday. Um, I find that I'm coming back to that struggle of not having a job, not having my own money, and not being able to do what I want to do, so I'm just in my feelings, so... I literally just stayed in bed till 10 o'clock. Like, I, I got up at 8, but I, I stayed in my bed till 10 because I was just, like, irritated. And um, I just finished watching John Wick 2 with my sister. So, I'm finally going to dive into the next 100 pages of A Royal Family. Um, my sister Steph has been reading, and she has been hitting me up. So, I'm like, it's time to stop playing and just read. Um, but I've just, I don't know, I've just been in my feelings. I was supposed to go out with some of my sisters, and, um, you know, I'm just... It sucks when you don't work, but you want to work, um, and you don't have your own finances to do things, and you have to ask or rely on other people. Um, I don't really like asking my son's father for anything. I don't like asking my mother for anything. I don't even like asking my brother for anything. You know, I prefer to have my own money, and it, it, it just, it sucks when I want to work so bad, and I can't. And it's not that I don't apply to jobs, because I'm literally applying every day to a different job, but it's just like... It has been told to me multiple times that God said it's not time for me to work. It's not meant for me to work. Like, I can make my own funds. But then when I try and step out and do things to make the funds, it pans out for maybe, like, a few days, and then it goes downhill. So, I'm back at that point of just 
dealing with that struggle. It's it's a struggle and it's bothersome and I really just wanted to ball out and cry last night and this morning, but I didn't. Um, but I'm back at that struggle and um yeah. It sucks. It really does. And um you know, I make money from YouTube, but it's not a lot of money and it takes me a good 4 or 5 months before I even see the money because YouTube doesn't send you any money until you're at $100 or more. Um I just made it to hundred dollars, but I set my threshold at one fifty. So I'm not gonna see anything until December from YouTube. So it's not even like I'm making bank off of YouTube. Cause I know a lot of other YouTubers are making money and that's totally fine. But I don't make money off of YouTube. Um the money I do get from YouTube immediately goes to my son anyway. So it's just like it's it's a struggle. It's it really is a struggle and I'm trying to just stay focused and remember that there's purpose in everything and God has a purpose. And um, I need to just continue to rely on God for my needs. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. So we're going to read. Um, so like I said, um, I read chapters 1 through 15 yesterday. And oh my God, the tears, the emotions, the heartache, the just the pain that I felt in my chest for Jerusha was crazy. Um, Steph did text me and she said, what did she say? She said, oh my word, girl, I'm heartbroken, tears, crocodile tears. And I'm just like, ah, don't tell me anything I haven't started yet. So I'm going to start diving into this book. Um, I'm going to read chapters 16 to 30. Um, I may come back to you guys after every five. Oh, Lord Jesus, I ain't ready. I ain't ready. I ain't ready. I ain't ready. Okay. So I don't know. I may come back to you guys in five chapters or ten chapters and let you guys know my thoughts if I have anything important to say. I do have my library sounds on right now. I'll leave a link down below or click the eye on the screen to see that video. It's just It says library sounds, study ambiance for two hours. It's kind of like a library setup with rain sounds in the back. So that's what I have going on. I have half my bagel left. Um, this is regular cream cheese with pumpkin. No, cookie butter cream cheese. So good. I have my pumpkin spice tea with pumpkin spice creamer of course and um we're just gonna read for the next hour or so it is 151 i'm probably not gonna finish this till 2 30 because knowing me i'm gonna get distracted so i'm gonna say 2 30 i'll stop reading so let's dive in to this and um this might not have as many clips of me reading this time around just because i don't want it to be super long i want this to be a little short vlog so um going in to chapter 16 So I'm texting Steph right now because my heart was broken. I cr I literally had tears coming out of my eyes. Um, I read two chapters, three chapters, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and I ha I literally have no words right now. Like. They kill baby girl. Like, they... Hmm. Literally 20 pages in, they kill baby girl. By baby girl, I mean Sarah. And if you guys don't know who Sarah is, I talked about Sarah previously in a previous clip about the um, little girl that uh, asked Timon and Jerusha if she can call them Ima and Abba. And then earlier, you know, her parents came back, took her away. Jerusha didn't want her to go, but Jerusha told her to go. Sarah dies protecting her excuse my language, bastard of a father. I am just... I can't deal. Um, Devora is a spy, which we, we pretty much kind of figured that out. She's a spy for Caiaphas. We don't like Caiaphas. Um, we can't stand him. Moses, little baby boy Moses became a little man, yo. I mean, he back to stuttering, but he had a moment where he didn't stutter. And I was like, ooh, he a man. But then he went back to stuttering, so. Yeah, I... Jacob came through, again, her dad, Jacob. Um, he came back to speak to her. It's just like, yo, 
she's not getting any wins. We are 120 babies in, and there are no wins for Jerusha. Like, none. Timone is away. Yogli is away. Her father is, like, coming and going, but he's working for the Romans. She done got spit in her face mad times by these Roman soldiers. Like, yo. They, they are literally spitting in her face. I, I can't do. So I'm going to keep reading. <laughs> um, I got about 12 chapters to go. Yeah, I got 12 chapters to go. I'm just... And these chapters I'm noticing are like really, really short. They're not long like the previous book, but... They... She... Baby girl, she's gone. Like... And the way she died... I'm not even going to talk about it because it's going to make me cry again. Like, the way she died. She didn't deserve that. I'm, she didn't deserve the way she died. She didn't deserve how she died. But I think what got me from the whole thing of her dying. Sarah is a little girl. And she understands what it means to truly forgive and love. Despite the hurt and disappointment. And I think that's why Jesus was so adamant about us being childlike because children just you know they trust easily they obey without a problem you know children are children they all like have two two cents to say but you know other than having their two comments to say they really pretty much obey um they're quick to forgive and they're loving like this book really just puts a lot of like the scriptures and things that you learn into perspective like the amount of love and forgiveness that this book covers is insane. And I mean, there are some things where I'm just like, no, ma'am, I couldn't do it. Like, the whole thing with Devora, it wouldn't be no besties. We, we, we would not be friends, sis. Like, you would, you have to go. I'm sorry, you would have to go. Um, Sarah literally saying, tell my father I love him. Like, no, no. Your father has to get his butt beat now. Like, and what her father did. Just, I can't do. I I can't do. So I'm gonna continue reading. Hopefully, nothing else. Nothing else happens. Like, I'm. I just. I need some wins. We need wins right now because right now there's nothing but L's being thrown Jerusha's way, and I'm just like, yo, can she at least have a win? Can she get pregnant? Can Timon come back? Can like her father and Yogli just not be like trying to get killed? Like, can we have a win? Can no one else die? Can just... I'm gonna go back to reading. Okay, so I have about 25 pages left before I'm done with my 100 pages for the day. And oh my god, I just... I seriously am a fan of Linda and her writing. She really... This book has been like nothing but L's, legit. Um, so far there has been two kind of, well, there's been four wins, but they've been sporadic. So the first win was her having a son. She does have a son, um, a baby that was basically orphaned. They took in a newborn and his name is Samuel. Yes, they call him Samuel. And then they just got another baby that they decided to call Stephen. So they have Samuel Jacob and now they have Stephen Paul, um, and I had to laugh because Stephen and, and them are just, okay, so Samuel is like, well, alright, going back, backtracking. Basically, Devorah sent them a note asking them to come, and they had to go to, I think, Herod's palace or something like that. They had to meet her late at night, um, and Devorah basically had an Egyptian newborn baby to give her as half-breed Hebrew, um, and Egyptian, but he's not a Jew, so it's one of those kind of Gentile mixed babies. And, um, Jerusha remembers that she had a, she had a, uh, an experience, we'll say, with God, um, with, through an angel, and you have to read the books and all the experience, but, um, she had a Hannah moment, and it was basically told to her that she would have sons from afar, and daughters she would nurse. So, basically, um, in a sense, I'm guessing she's not going to physically birth any sons, for Timon, 
um, her sons are going to be orphans that she takes in that her and Timon will raise as their own and then she will birth daughters for Timon which I thought was insane so um, she has these two but Stephen is a half-breed Egyptian Hebrew so he is darker skinned so um Samuel is like well um she said Ima I want to see he's kind of black so you know Jerusha's like well does that matter he said no can I hold hold my brother and I thought that was like so cute because it's like kids don't care about complexion they really don't like they notice differences but those differences don't mean nothing to them it's just like oh that's different okay but we're the same type of thing but as adults when we see skin color or eye color or hair color, we're prone to um, separate people into boxes. So I thought that was so cool to read. And then it's funny because um, Samuel is like looking at his head and he's like, oh, his hair is fuzzy. Fuzz. He giggled. Call him Fuzz. So Timon looked at him and was like, well, we call him Steven. That's his name. He said, how would you like to be called Fuzz? Then he said, when you were a baby, we could have called you Baldy. <laughs> you had no hair. So Samuel felt the top of his hair and was like, Baldy. And um, back in, what chapter was that? Oh my God, I'm trying to find it because there's like a lot of funny moments that took place. Um, Is this it? Nope. I'm going to find this because it was hilarious. Is this it? We got to find it. We got to find it. We got to find it. Yes, so back in chapter 24. Okay, so this takes place in chapter 27. So three chapters prior to that, when um, he was still a, like a little baby walking around, um, Jerusha felt some type of way because she's like, well, um, maybe you want some hair. She rubbed Samuel's shiny scalp. Good thing we didn't call you Samson. We all know Samson had the long hair that couldn't be cut. Um, I forgot what the... Uh, not a code. I forgot what it is. I'll put it on the screen if I can remember. But it was something that Sam Sam Samson had where he could not cut his hair. Um, his hair was like connected to the strength that he had or something like that. But um, I just thought that was so cute. Like, oh my god! But I'm 25, 25 pages to go. Okay, chapter 20. This is 27 now. Yeah, I'm on chapter 27. So. I know this is gearing up to something crazy, and I already know Timon is going to die. I know this, because I read the back of the book. I read the synopsis to book three. So I know he's going to die, which kind of guts me, but... <sighs> oh, and Jacob came back, and it's so cute, because Jacob and Abigail are not divorced. They're still married. He never actually gave her the divorce, which was like, ah, so cute, and Yogli... Just Yogli. It's just... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. So, I'm gonna get back to reading the last 25 pages and I'm gonna come back and end the vlog for today. I might finish this book tonight, depending on how I feel after I read. Um, after I read, I'm gonna just finish watching John Wick 3 and bust out some videos. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna read the last 25 pages, you guys. Oh, this book is everything. Everything. Okay, back to reading. Just gonna um, update both my Goodreads right now. I. Linda, can we have a conversation right quick? You have this, this way of um, pulling me into the story and then gutting me and then gutting me some more. And then just gutting me again. And then you, you give me some, some, some wins. And then you give me more losses. Like, I cannot deal with the losses. Like, let me just say, Devora, we got a problem. Like, I didn't like Caiaphas. I still don't like Caiaphas. But Devora, you on that list. So you, Caiaphas, and Effa can go into a garbage can and be thrown into a pit inside of a erupting volcano just saying um i'm really just like writing my review my my thing right now for goodreads
posted that up. I read a, like two pages of chapter 31, but I'm going to stop. I'm not going to read anymore right now because it's time to watch John Wick 3. But I only have this much left to go, guys. One third left and definitely a five star read automatically like i can, I don't even have to continue to know that it's a five star read i'm done it's five stars doesn't care i don't care um definitely five but just i, I can't even function with the words that i want to say right now because it's it's insane like how things are happening for jerusha and i mean like it's back to freaking back like i i don't know how to do so i'm gonna take this out real quick um how many chapters what chapter is this chapter 31 i mean chapter 30 ended on like a sad note and then chapter 31 begins on a crazy note it's just like bruh all right let's Put my, I'm going to put my clip here at chapter 36. Put my bookmark in chapter 30. Is this 31? Yeah, chapter 31. So, um, but I just, I, 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 um, highly, if you are not looking for something that will gut you, um, that will make you cry, like, literally, I've cried numerous times. Um, I try not to get that on camera because it was so emotional. Um, just... Like, even Steph had to take a break herself. Like, I'm tempted to finish this tonight. So, Steph, sis, I'm going to text you, but I'm sorry if I finish it a day early, but... Sorry if you guys hear that music. My neighbors are outside right now. Um, I'm getting a little emotional right now, being honest with you guys, which is why I'm not as, like, chipper. I explained to you when I started this clip. Um, well, the previous clip to this day that I've just, I haven't been in the best moods and I'm starting to get in my feelings and emotions. So I think I need to stop reading this for now because it's going to make me emotional. So I'm going to watch John Wick and probably try and make some videos because I feel like crap right now. Honestly, I feel like I want to curl up in a ball and cry. Um, just because I'm, I'm mentally struggling right now with not having a job. Um, and as I mentioned before, I had plans today with some of my sisters and it just sucks when you really want to do something and you can't because you don't have the funds to do it. Um, and not that you just don't have the funds to do it, but you can't eat, you can't even like get the funds to do what you want to do. So I'm just like upset. And then I was supposed to get a, <laughs> I was supposed to have mail today. But it's not coming until Tuesday since Monday is a holiday. So I'm even more frustrated because I was looking forward to that coming today to, like, help me get over it. And it might not seem like a big deal to most of you guys, um, me not being able to go out. But I've been a stay-at-home mom for five years. Stay-at-home mom for five, for five years. The first year was fine. Um, newborn baby, you know, baby fever, loving it. Um then after that it was just like okay staying in the house all day doing nothing with my life not having any money to do what i want with a baby that can't talk was irritating because you know you have a baby you love your child but you couldn't really converse with your child there were no words that your child could say so you're home by yourself and then i was already depressed you know i didn't want to hang out with nobody so that like added to it and then um you know, my son got older, he talks now, but now it's just like, okay, you need that, that, that time alone without your son because, you know, your children get on your nerves sometimes. So it's just like, okay, I get the weekends off. I say weekends off because he goes to his father's house. Um, but even still, I'm still stuck in this house, in this room with my family. Right now, my sister and my brother is here. My other brother is on tour. He's going to be on tour for a while. My mom is out. It's just like... Yo, and I can I can obviously just go outside by myself and you know walk away around, but I don't have any cash, and just I don't like being outside with no money. And I was really honestly looking forward to today, like wholeheartedly looking forward to it. I was excited for it for the past two weeks, and um, it's partially my fault because I waited so long, I guess to ask or to try and get the finances. But it's also irritating because I don't like asking. And I don't, I don't know. Like, and, it's, and then on top of that, it just happens to be a freaking nice day. Like, I'm over it, you guys. I'm just, like, irritated and just annoyed. And I don't, I don't care. I'm getting back in that mode. So I really need to just do something to 
get myself out of this slump. Reading normally does, but this book has gutted me. It, it gutted me. It gutted me. It's adding to my sadness, and it's making me even more sad. So I'm going to put this to the side. I was going to pick up Redeeming Love to get some more reading I had done, but I can't even deal with that book because that book is worse than this book. It's just like I'm over it. So I'm thinking about picking up um, a fantasy novel that I need to review. This week coming up, I have five review books that need to be done. Um, two for Monday, one for Daughter of Increase and one for my other channel, which is Nay's Pink Bookshelf. That's where I do a lot of my bookish stuff. I haven't been on there, but I'm getting more active on that channel again. And then I have three for the weekend, which is, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I have reviews. So I'm going to do a 24-hour reading challenge on Monday where I literally just stay up all day on, on, on Monday since the kids are out of school. I'm going to stay up that whole day and binge read. Binge read books. So I'm going to start that at 12 midnight and end it at 11.59. We're going to hope that I don't sleep. So I'm going to try to get some sleep tonight and try to maybe take a quick nap tomorrow morning in the car. We'll see. But, um... Yeah, I'm going to do a 24-hour readathon and see if I can get those three books done. Because this month, I, I have a lot of reviews. Not just for, like, Daughter of Increase, but for Nay's Pink Bookshelf. Um, a lot of review books. A lot. Um, for November, I'm not being as excessive. I did request some reviews. Um, and luckily, some of them um, double cross over with both my blogs. So, that's great. I did get accepted into a bunch, a bunch of blog tours and stuff. So, I have, like, physical copies of books coming in. I'm so, so excited. Um, and one of them is going to be my Mel Melanie Dickerson. And um, I'm just like, oh, sorry, I kicked the camera. I'm so excited about that. And I get excited over, like, the little things bookish-wise. Like, if I get a new book in the mail, I get excited about that. And people think I'm crazy, but I do. Um, it makes me happy. And I wouldn't feel better right now, but like I said our royal family is gutting me like it's gutting me and making me even more sad on top of me already being sad so i just need to pause probably won't finish it probably will who knows but i'm going to watch some youtube videos um probably make some videos i do want to make my review for um harvest of rubies and harvest of gold i want to make those reviews and things like that but um yeah updated bookshelf tour coming soon because i organized two of my christian fiction shelves i need to or christian fiction my christian non-fiction shelves i need to organize this last shelf but i just have books all over the place and i don't want to organize them if they're not in order so whatever um but yeah that's it for today today's vlog is ending and i will come back if i finish the book i'll come back later and if not it'll be a new day most likely tomorrow i'll be reading in a car finishing the book um so it'll probably be like a car vlog to end the vlog but um so far five star read i am loving jerusha and just her growth and everything and this book is freaking phenomenal i'm sad that the end is almost near because only one book left and um most likely we're gonna binge read that next month because we started in september so you know september october november but yeah i'm gonna go and try to figure out something with my life. Um, it is currently 1.05 in the morning. 1.05 a.m. I finished A Royal Family. So, I mean, technically, it's still a three-day vlog since it's, like, the next day is the 13th. But it's really not a three-day vlog. But I'm just, I'm trying to update on my other Goodreads account right now. I'm trying to find the words, but I just, I can't. This was so good. Um, so, so good. Really good. This one made me cry a lot more. Um, the first one was definitely sad and emotional, but this one, there was just like death back to back to back. But even in the depths, you saw the growth of the characters and their faith and, um, the scene with Timon, 
That man is such a godly man. He is... I'm sorry, guys. I'm just doing something. But, like, he is such a godly man. He went out like a king. Like, oh. Let me just say Antonius. Yes. Now, I have book three here, which is a royal father. Um, I already have it, like, marked up to split into a three-day reading. But I'm sure me and my sis will probably pick this up next month. Um, just... Uh, so good. So good. Um, I highly, highly recommend Linda Ferguson if you guys are interested in biblical fiction. Um, this... Uh, I can't even put my thoughts into words. Like, it's going to take me a good day or two to really sit on what my review is going to be because I don't I don't really know she's definitely up there with Connie Lynn and Tessa for me Connie Lynn and Tessa she's she's up there for me um but yeah what I'm going to do it is now 108 I just updated so I have no books that I am reading at the moment but like I told you guys, it's 108. I should be going to sleep. Got to get up for church in a, in a few. But you guys see 108. Um, I'm, I'm an emotional wreck. <laughs> the, the book just, it gutted me. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to take a break mentally from biblical fiction. I think I need it. Um, I may be picking up this book next. Oh. And there will be a reading blog for this, but um, The Last Man at the End by R. William Bennett. Um, this is also biblical Christian fiction about the time of um, when Mary was pregnant with Jesus before she gave birth. And basically it's the last man at the end, basically the last guy that took the room at the end that caused Mary to be unable to give birth at the end. And why she had to give birth to him at the barn and manger or whatever the case. But um, that's what this is. And it's a little tiny read, so... Um, I might make this like a one day reading vlog. I'm, I'm planning to read this on Monday. That's the goal to read this Monday. October 14th will be, um, I'll be doing a 24 hour readathon in which I stay up all day from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Monday. Um, and I'm doing it that day because, well, which is tomorrow, basically. So I'm doing it tomorrow because, um, my son and my sister and I'm like, all the kids are out of school for, um, Columbus Day. So I figured that would be the perfect time to read, and I'm going to try not to get no sleep in. <laughs> we going to try. Um, and if I get tired, I'll take a nap or whatever, um, especially since my son will be here, so I won't nap that long, which is great. He'll be able to wake me up if I need to get up. Um, but yeah, I'll be reading this next. But uh, right now, as of tomorrow, well, today, um, I'm going to be reading this. It's called Dragon Watch, Master of the Phantom Isle by Brandon Moll. This is middle grade fantasy about dragons and unicorns and, like, grizzly bears and things. It's it's a cute, fun fantasy, and it's a chunky one, so I am just going to listen to the audiobook for this. I'm not going to take the book out, but the, the book is super cute. Like, really, really cute, and I just love the purple color. Um... So I'm going to read this, and I think it, it it's just fitting how, like, they're both purple. Purple, purple, yeah. Um, but I'm going to read that next just because my brain cannot... It's going to take me a minute. Like, it's late. Um, I'm probably going to text Steph later on when I get up, probably for church in a car, because... My emotions? It... Phenomenal job, Linda. Five-star off the back i am loving the series i am loving how the whole explanation of the lion and the butterfly is coming together the whole line of judah this there's like new things being involved new characters being brought in new family members and it's just it is so so good now i do know that book three for, so book two included caiaphas but caiaphas never really like spoke um he came towards the end but he really didn't talk much. But um, I hated him still. We can't stand Kai. If it's simple as that. Like, we can take Devorah out of the garbage can and keep Devorah. I love her. I feel bad for what happened to her with Herod and her kids. Just oh my gosh. But um, we can take Devorah out of the garbage can. We can let her live. But Caiaphas can still be put in a garbage can and thrown into a pit into a, a volcano that's about to erupt. 
seriously. He's pissing me off. But um, I know that book three, which is a royal father, has to do has to do with um, Ifa, 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 whatever. Kaif is a son. Um, but it also deals with the new love interest, Antonius, which. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Antonius. Antonius is, he definitely reminds me of Timon. But there was a scene, oh god, there was a scene where she went to take a bath. And, um, I guess it was really smoky, so, you know, you can't see people. It's like one of those movie scenes when it's really smoky and the girl is in the tub and then the guy is on his way in the tub and he has the towel wrapped around him. They had one of those little scenes, but she was like, oh my god, get out, get out. And it was just, like, so cute. And then what I, uh, what I love the most most is that Timon basically gave her his blessing before he did what he did I ain't gonna say what he did but he did but he did he did something I understood it but it was also heartbreaking to the point where I cried like those last five chapters gutted me even more it was just like loss after loss after loss and though she had some wins Jerusha had some wins there was a lot of loss so I'm really hoping that she gets some wins in book three because from book one to book two, she's getting nothing but losses. But again, I understand suffering for the sake of Christ and all of that. It's just, it's hard to read and it really made me emotional. Like, I literally cried um, during the last few scenes because it was just like, yo, her husband, her kids, her husband, her kids, her father, her yogli. I was about to say something else, but I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But it's just like, but she did get to meet her great, great, great grandfather, which... Is it? No, she met her great grandfather, right? No, her great great grandfather. So, you know, in this book, she did have her father. She had her mother. She had her her grandfather and her great grandfather, um, that she got to meet towards the end. It was so, it was amazing. I love it so much. I highly recommend it. I'm rambling on. I'm super tired. I need to go to sleep because I gotta get in a few minutes. Not a few minutes, like in like eight hours. Gotta get up. So, um, we're going to end this here. Thank you guys for watching this video. And um, definitely reading vlogs will be coming more often. Hopefully this one is shorter than the other ones. Because some of my reading vlogs be like 43 minutes, 44 minutes to an hour long. Hopefully this one is less than that. But I'm sure it's not. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next reading vlog. Bye!